got to be really careful with the way I frame this video because I look like a fashion icon here. I look like the Monopoly man here. Stylish. Landlord. I think teaching history is one of the most important subjects in school. I think it's important for a magnitude of reasons, mostly so we don't repeat history. I also think it's interesting. Also think not all history is bad. I'm talking specifically 2014. 2014 was a near perfect year. I was scrolling TikTok the other day and I found this video. I thought to myself, it's been nine years since my prime. I would do anything to go back. I'd say I'm a pretty accomplished 20 year old. I'm not 20. Gee, <laughs> say I'm a pretty accomplished 22 year old. I'm at university, I'm living with friends, I have a boyfriend, I have hobbies. That being said, I would do anything good to go back to 2014. So that's exactly what I'm doing today. Today I wanted to do like a recap of the two 2014s I was aware of. There was Pale Grunge Tumblr. 2014 and there was hyperfeminized oversaturated tumblr and i think they're both interesting and they are also dating i've seen a lot of people start to romanticize 2014 again not just people from my age group but younger people saying they wish they were part of 2014 as a teenager and to that i say live your life sweetie pie also i get it this video is just one big history lesson, it's a big recap. And I'm also going to hypothesize why we're maybe mourning over 2014. I know I am. I did not finish that video that day, so we're continuing in a different city. I'm going to talk about 2014 Instagram, but I'm also going to lump that in with pop culture, world events, and just the music at the time. 2014 was the year of Instagram. I really think it peaked socially there were no ads it was just like oversaturated images it was so much fun i really wish we could just like go back it almost feels wrong no it, it is wrong to put ebola and like vanessa hudgens being crowned queen of coachella in the same category but to me that feels like 2014 like i know that those two events happened in 2014. i think the worst part of 2014 personally for me was begging my brother to nominate me for the ice bucket challenge. I don't even think we had like ice cube trays so I'm not sure that my video had ice in it. Is that fucked up to say? There was a bit of overlap with like the trending obsessions. There was EOS, Baby Lips, Nutella, Starbucks, Brandy Melville. And then we had this weird obsession with like branded water. I remember Voss water was like massive for some reason and Fiji water. I don't know what kind of marketing was going on there, but we were all in it. I was 13 when I first went to America and I remember seeing Voss in the store and even my brain told me not to get a Voss water bottle because why should I buy into a trend of water? Definitely the worst part of 2014 was the Ebola pandemic. Oh, sorry, epidemic. I'm not gonna pretend that 2014 was like this perfect utopia. Yeah, I won't get into that obviously, but we also had net neutrality, which was only a thing in America, but I was so fucking scared for them for some reason. But let's talk about all the fun shit. I specifically miss that kind of era because I don't think we've had an app in the past 10-ish years that we've all been excited for and we've all downloaded. I'm talking specifically Flappy Bird, but there was also Ice Cream Jump, Angry Birds, Candy Crush. I do genuinely miss the way the internet jumped on apps, I guess. I remember specifically with games, it was Flappy Bird. That was definitely the game of the year. It was only up for, I think, a week. And then people started getting genuinely enraged and the owner of the game took it off the app store. I don't know, it just became a whole thing where if you still had the app and you hadn't deleted it yet, that was worth something. Like, your phone was worth something. Hey guys, I'm very embarrassed to announce that this was a 2013 game, so sorry for wasting your time. I'm gonna read out some of the top songs from 2014, and I think songs can still have their viral moment, and they still do, but let me read the list out. Just every song was a banger. Happy, Bang Bang, Fancy, Maps, 
wiggle black widow say something all about their base habits anaconda root animals shower rather be chandelier am i wrong budapest she looks so perfect dark horse all of me counting stars talk dirty problem stay with me timber turn down for what let it go from frozen wake me up demons by imagine dragons story of my life boom clap and burn by ellie goulding i think now that we can stream music and we can discover new music on our own we're not just like relying on radio hits that's definitely the fucking reason why all those songs are recognizable like what a year what a year for music when i was scripting as well i was like trying to remember if certain songs were 2014 because they felt very 2014 i remember wrecking ball was a massive moment and that was actually 2013 but i think just in general that like kind of five year span of music i know there's songs that do create buzz but it's just not the same with all that in mind though i do think in 10 years we're gonna be looking back on music now and we're gonna feel the same way i guess i remember at the start of the year kill bill was huge went triple platinum in my home i think i'll look back on this time in real fondness and i do appreciate that we can now find our own stuff we can even even the fact that we can like find artists and gatekeep them i don't agree with gatekeeping artists but i do think that is awesome sorry just a few honorable mentions two websites that i kind of forgot about before we have we heart it kind of like pinterest and i was kind of disappointed the day it shifted from we heart it to put to pinterest it was like that that is a time capsule like if you if you still use we heart it would you prefer a beach wedding or i also want to mention polyvore which was um you could create outfit collage layout was so popular yeah that was a pop culture moment I love Polyvore with all my heart. To lead in the next section of the video, I wanted to make a quick mention to Fresh Tops. That was Coachella 2016. Stop. This was Coachella 2016. This was the vibe at the time. I, oh my God. I wanted a shirt from Fresh Tops so fucking bad. It wasn't cute. The graphic design was so it just like encapsulates that whole era and like you don't even understand i remember like fake giveaways used to like go around on instagram for fresh top yeah let me just let me just show you what i'm talking about Twenty fourteen was certainly a time for fashion i have bullet points here we have Victoria's Secret, Brandy Melville, American Apparel, striped clothing, army jackets, boots, converse, graphic tees, bows, and blouses. I'm missing so much, but just looking at this, I had all of it. I, I <laughs> it wasn't cute, but it makes me smile and it makes me warm. We also had like the onesie craze, which I think is hilarious. I think that's definitely transferred over into like hoodies but i i think i think onesies over hoodies of course yeah, i think it was the year of like basics for sure um which i have nothing against obviously i was all up in this both victoria's secret and brandy melville have kind of like dropped in popularity victoria's secret actually both for pretty similar reasons um Victoria's Secret famously very like fat phobic and then Brandy Melville is just like pretentiously fat phobic as well but at the time like this was it like this was it pop culture in a sense of like celebrities wasn't actually that big in 2014 I looked at like summaries of the pop culture moment the only ones I could remember were the Kim and Kanye wedding the Grammys photo and I would say like the John Green and the Shailene Woodley renaissance that was crazy to me I, I yeah, wasn't invested in the wedding I tried to care about the Grammys photo to be fair the only people I knew in that photo was Alan and Jennifer Lawrence from memory I think I know more now but 
I had a gun to my head. And you got, you know, you asked me to name them. Culturally, 2014 was big, but I don't know why, to be honest. I, I don't understand how nostalgia works. I don't know why Instagram filters make the year seem so good. I feel very underqualified to talk about Tumblr. First of all, I was a little too late to Tumblr, and second of all, I was a little too young for Tumblr. But I know enough, so I'm going to talk about what I know. And if you want a more in-depth video on this, I would love to research it. If you have like any things you want me to talk about specifically, I'm I'm only as I'm not hard to reach. First, want to get out the way the trigger warning, eating disorders, and cutting. Um, and I'm not gonna make light of it. I just I think it's interesting how I didn't even know what those were. I didn't even know what those were until Tumblr, and I just I feel like. It really put a lot of people onto it that otherwise wouldn't have known either. Actually, I really do apologize if I say anything wrong, but um, it was just introduced to a lot of young girls. I I think if it wasn't such a big trend or it wasn't so romanticized, a lot of people would have avoided that time in their lives. Specifically with self-harm, I think eating disorders in general are like kind of sometimes unavoidable given, you know, fat phobia and all that specifically with self-harm I think like depression was absolutely trendy back then oh my god yeah I think eating disorders would have happened on its own but I do think tumblr fueled it whereas I think a lot of people wouldn't have known about like the existence of self-harm if they didn't go on tumblr which I think is really unfortunate but yeah just a really weird time on tumblr for that kind of thing I, I'm telling you I am not I am not the expert of 2014 tumblr but I do want to talk about like the style like the fashion and I want to talk about the music that came out of 2014 tumblr I also think like Kylie Jenner was actually queen of tumblr I think Ariana Grande was queen of Instagram Kylie queen of tumblr she was in this like weird peak of her life I really think she was it girl of 2014 tumblr she had the like blue dark hair she had the makeup she had the clothing obviously she could afford it she is what i think of when i hear 2014 tumblr i think in terms of like pale grunge non-celebrities there was a instagram tumblr girly called charlie i think it was elizabeth those two girls were also what i think of when i think of 2014 tumblr they were so ahead of their time just like pale grunge in general i think is a really cool style and i do i don't think it's ugly i think it's aged well it's kind of items that are like a little bit more black and white there was stripes there was like tennis skirts there was chokers there was crop tops there were like doc martens fishnets dark eyeliner dark hair denim jackets there is this one top that i hope people remember it's a gray think brandy melville shirt and it's got a little alien as like the brand i remember when visco was in its prime or vsco was in its prime my friend actually helped me out with this temperature minus three contrast plus two brightness minus one saturation minus one exposure plus two that was the way the bad bitches edited their photos and you just had to be there you just had to be there what a fucking era for photography i think the photos were a lot cooler than like the previous tumblr era of photos which was like just really hd photos of like random shit like baby lips and eos and like a skateboard i remember penny boards were huge i think yeah it pa it pales in comparison no pun intended i know i'm like severely lacking in research in this part but i think tumblr definitely spawned a lot of music craze i think lana del rey halsey five seconds of summer and marina and the diamonds comes to mind Tumblr did so much promotional free yeah free promotion for these artists and i don't think they'd be as big as they are without tumblr now and i don't think that's a bad thing i think they really fueled their careers and i think that's awesome speaking of marina um there is that image of lana del rey fka twigs marina and um florence welsh together that could that could be in the mat 2014 tumblr was more of a lifestyle than i think 2014 instagram because 
you couldn't really afford 2014 Instagram if you weren't rich. I think it was more of a lifestyle choice like buying iced tea or hanging with their friends in car parks and under bridges and stuff like that where I think it was a more affordable <laughs> aesthetic to achieve but I don't think it was a more positive lifestyle if you know what I mean just considering all the things that I talked about. That being said 2014 Instagram, 2014 Tumblr are girlfriends. I also apologize I know this part of the video is less researched but you know my channel. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you want to see me again. Comment if you want to see anything again. Ugh. Bye. Yeah.